Once upon a time, there was a man named Walt Disney whose imagination knew no bounds. With a passion for storytelling and a determination to make dreams come true, he built an empire that captured the hearts of millions around the world. From Mickey Mouse to Marvel superheroes, Disney has become synonymous with magic, wonder, and adventure. But behind the glitz and glamour lies a story of persistence, innovation, and a little bit of pixie dust. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into the captivating tale of Disney, a story that will transport you to a world where anything is possible. But before we dive into that, show us some love by clicking the subscribe button below. Picture this, it's 1901, and a baby is born in a quiet Chicago suburb who would change the course of entertainment history forever. Yup, you guessed it right. It's Walt Disney. Fast forward a few years, and the Disney family has packed up and moved to Kansas City, Missouri. This is where young Walt first discovered his love of art and began attending the Kansas City Art Institute. He even tried his hand at a cartooning correspondence course, What a Legend. By the time Walt was 18, he was working as a commercial illustrator, and it was there that he met his partner in crime, Bob Iwerks. These two hit it off like a house on fire and were soon inseparable. When the studio they were working for went bankrupt, they decided to take matters into their own hands and started their own company, Iwerks Disney Commercial Artists. Unfortunately, things didn't quite go to plan, and both Walt and Dub ended up leaving to work for the Kansas City Film Ad Company, which created commercials with cutout animation. But Walt wasn't content with just making ads, he wanted to make cartoons. When he couldn't convince the Kansas City Film Ad Company to try out cell animation, he left to form his own company with a colleague. This led to Laughograms, a series of short cartoons for a local theater. It was a hit. The Laughogram studio was born, and Walt even hired several animators to work with him. But as we all know, nothing good lasts forever. Walt realized that making short cartoons wasn't going to be enough to keep the business going, so he had the brilliant idea to create a short film called Alice's Wonderland, which combined live action and animation. Unfortunately, the studio went bankrupt before the film could be completed, and it all came crashing down in 1923. But Walt wasn't about to let a little bankruptcy get him down. He was only 21 years old at the time, and he knew that the world was his oyster. So, he packed up his bags and headed to Hollywood, Los Angeles, to pursue his dreams of making it big in the entertainment industry. After a failed attempt with Iwerks Disney commercial artists, Walt convinced his brother Rory to help him start Disney Brothers Studio, later renamed Walt Disney Studio. He even convinced his old pal of Iwerks to come back and join the team. Things weren't looking up at first, but the studio kept afloat by creating Oswald the Lucky Rabbit for Universal Pictures. But when Universal hired most of its animators, it was a devastating blow. Walt learned his lesson and decided to only work for himself from then on, setting out to create a new character that he could control. The Enter of Mickey Mouse The impact of Mickey's creation is crystal clear. He marked the beginning of the Disney empire we know and love today. Walt formed a new team with Iwerks, and after releasing several shorts, they found success with Steamboat Willie, the first film to synchronize sound and animation. Disney's dedication to innovation never wavered and the company was always pushing the boundaries of animation technology. Through the Great Depression, they created the first color cartoons and released the phenomenal film Snow White. But all this was expensive. This meant that the company was constantly on the brink of bankruptcy. But Walt's dedication to creating high quality entertainment kept the company going, even during tough times. As the 1940s began, Walt Disney's film studio was pumping out classic after classic. Pinocchio, Fantasia, Dumbo, and Bambi are all beloved films today, but at the time, they struggled to make an impact at the box office. World War II was raging and the foreign market was suffering. Despite these challenges, Walt and his team persevered, pouring their hearts and souls into each film. But just as things were starting to look up, disaster struck. A large number of animators went on strike, leaving the studio in turmoil. 
The films that were produced during this time didn't perform well, and Walt was left wondering what the future held for his beloved studio. Thankfully, a ray of light appeared on the horizon in the form of Cinderella. The film was set to release in 1950, and it was a huge success. Audiences flocked to see the fairy tale come to life on the big screen, and it gave the studio the boost it needed. Around the same time, Walt was branching out into new territory. Treasure Island was released in 1950, marking Disney's first foray into live-action films. It was a bold move, but it paid off. More live-action films followed, and by the mid-1950s, Disney was making waves on television too. And it gets better. First came Walt Disney's Disneyland Anthology program in 1954, which showcased behind-the-scenes looks at Disneyland and other Disney projects. Then, in 1955, the Mickey Mouse Club hit the airwaves, becoming a beloved children's TV show that featured music, skits, and cartoons. You might think that all of this success would be enough for Walt Disney, but he was always looking for the next big thing. His mind was constantly racing with new ideas and innovations, and he knew that there was something missing from the entertainment world and that something was an amusement park. For years, Walt had been dreaming of a place where families could come and experience the magic of Disney firsthand. He wanted to create a park that was unlike anything anyone had ever seen before, a place where people could forget their troubles and immerse themselves in a world of wonder and joy. And so, he set out to make his dream a reality. Walt poured everything he had into the creation of Disneyland. He spared no expense, going to incredible lengths to ensure that every detail was perfect. The result was a park that exceeded even his wildest expectations, a place that truly felt like magic. As Disneyland opened its gates in 1955, Walt watched with tears in his eyes as families streamed through the turnstiles. He had done it. He had created a place where people could come and forget their worries, if only for a little while. And as he looked around at the smiling faces of the children and parents alike, he knew that his dream had come true. But the dream was far from over. Disneyland will never be completed. It will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in the world. This was famously spoken by Walt Disney himself during the opening ceremony of Disneyland on July 17, 1955. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. At the time, Disneyland was the first ever theme park of its kind, and Walt had worked tirelessly to make his dream a reality. He'd invested a significant amount of money and effort to ensure that the park was perfect for its grand opening. However, despite the successful opening day, Walt realized that he hadn't achieved his ultimate goal. Walt envisioned Disneyland as a constantly evolving living thing, where new attractions and experiences could be added over time. He knew that the park's success depended on its ability to stay fresh and exciting and that it would require ongoing creativity and innovation to achieve that. In other words, he recognized that Disneyland was not a static project to be completed and then left alone, but rather a dynamic entity that would continue to evolve and grow over time. Let's talk about Roy Disney, the man who took the reins after his brother Walt's passing. As CEO and Chairman, Roy oversaw some pretty epic moments in Disney's history. One of the most magical moments was the unveiling of the Walt Disney World Resort. Roy once said, It's not the magic that makes it work, it's the way we work that makes it magic. Roy understood that the hard work, dedication, and passion of the Disney team were the true source of the magic that made Disney World so special. And it's that same dedication and passion that continue to make Disney World and all things Disney so beloved today. Back in 1983, Walt's son-in-law Ron Miller became the CEO and saw that Disney needed to make a change when the rate at which animated movies were released started to slow, and the Walt Disney World theme parks became the primary profit source. Family-friendly films were losing favor with audiences, and they were gravitating towards more adult-oriented content. The late 1980s and early 1990s were a time of great renaissance for the Walt Disney Company. They had hit the jackpot with Who Framed Roger Rabbit? It was a unique combination of live action and animation that gave a tremendous boost to their animation division. Suddenly, Disney animations were once again the talk of the town and a cascade of them followed suit. 
They brought to life memorable tales such as The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin and the Lion King all within a short span of five years. And just like that, the Disney Renaissance was born, taking the world by storm with its magical and spellbinding creations. But it never stopped growing. Bob Iger stepped into the CEO role in 2005 and boy, did he mean business. He orchestrated some mega deals that would make anyone's head spin. First up, he bought Pixar for a cool $7.4 billion. Then he went for Marvel Entertainment, snatching them up for around $4 billion. But wait, there's more. He acquired Lucasfilm, giving Disney the rights to the iconic Star Wars franchise. And just when we thought he was done, he went ahead and bought 21st Century Fox for a whopping $71 billion. Talk about making it rain. Bob Iger sure knew how to make some smart business moves and take Disney to the next level. Today, the Walt Disney Company is one of the largest entertainment companies in history, with hundreds of thousands of employees and billions of dollars in income. One of Walt Disney's most famous quotes came from a 1963 interview with the Saturday Evening Post, where he said, I don't want the public to see the world they live in while they are in the park. I want them to feel they are in another world. This sentiment embodies the magic and wonders that Walt strived to create throughout his life. He believed in the power of imagination and storytelling to transport people to different places and his legacy continues to inspire millions of people around the world. Walt Disney's life was a testament to the belief that anything is possible with hard work, dedication, and a little bit of magic. Disney is getting more even better. After stepping down as CEO in 2021, Bob Iger shocked the world with his return to command just one year later. His stunning announcement marked a new chapter for Disney and left many speculating about how he would lead Disney again into the future. Walt Disney's legacy lives on, and his words continue to inspire generations to dream big and make the impossible possible. Who would have thought it would become the magical empire it is today? Let us know what you think, and we'll see you in the next video.